Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. I am so, so, so grateful that you are here today and I have something really important to talk to you about. I mean always, but it just feels extra important today. I'm actually in my basement. just wanted to mix up where I'm recording these. It has beautiful lighting down here and a table. You know, maybe not the most aesthetic behind me, but that's okay. We've got the alphabet. We've got the candles, some Halloween decorations. That's all we need, right? So today I want to talk about some things that have really helped me get out of a funk. Now, I feel like I've been in and out of a funk for the past year, and I won't go into details because I feel like I talk about it all the time, but just check out past videos if you'd like to know why I'm in a funk or why I've been in and out of a funk. Uh, but again, everyone has these seasons. Like, there's nothing wrong with you. That is one of my favorite things to say because it's so true and we forget it all the time. We feel like there's something wrong with us, but there's not. Everyone goes through seasons of ups and downs and everyone gets in a funk every once in a while. What just gets tricky is when you feel like you can't get out of it. Like you're just spiraling and just like simmering and just ruminating in that funk. That is not a good feeling. So from my experience, these are some things that have really helped me and I hope they can help you get out of your funk so you can get in that more high vibration state. Abraham Hicks talks about it. Pretty much any spiritual teacher talks about how we want to move up the emotional scale and that your energy and your vibration creates your reality. We don't want to do that like put perfectionism on that. Like we're not going to be in a high vibe state all the time and that's okay. We're not meant to be. We're meant to have contrast but I just want to share some things that could really help you get out of a funk and help raise your vibration. So first off let's just take a big exhale together like inhale deeply big audible exhale <sighs> maybe do that a few times like the power is in the exhale when you exhale it pushes those mind stories away and it just makes space it calms your nervous system our breath is so powerful and we forget all the time and that's okay i also want to say that a lot of times these like darker seasons or heavier seasons can actually be huge gifts, especially when you look at them in hindsight. A lot of times these can be huge invitations for growth and lessons and things we need to realize. Now, it may not feel like that in the middle of a dark, heavy season, and that's totally okay. Feel your feels, like I always say, but usually there's some kind of gift that comes out of those funky seasons, no matter how like where you are on the scale of funkiness. <laughs> when you look at it in hindsight, there's usually some gifts in there for you. And I also want to remind you that like really no one knows what they're doing. <laughs> People like to act like they know what they're doing, myself included. I like to share things on here that have helped me tremendously, but we're all just trying to figure it out, right? Like no one actually knows what's going on. We like to pretend like we do, but we're all just trying to figure it out. Maybe that's a comforting thought to you. I know that's a comforting thought for me. So just remember that when you feel totally lost, like no one actually knows what they're doing and that's okay too. We're all just trying to figure it out and that's the fun of it. All right. The first thing that has really helped me recently because I feel like just a huge shift in my energy recently is taking radical responsibility. Now I had to go back and remind myself with my own podcast. I can't remember what episode it is, but I will link it here. I did a recap of an Abraham Hicks workshop that I went to. And one of the major themes at that workshop was taking personal responsibility for your energy, for your vibration, and like releasing that blame that we want to put on externals for why we feel so shitty or like why we feel like we're in such a funk or why we feel so bad. A lot of times, again, we all do it. We want to blame externals for why we feel so bad. And my mind always likes to go to the extreme, like where people are going through truly traumatic stuff. Like, of course, that can be hard. Like when some really hard stuff is going on in your life, that's tough to navigate. I'm not saying that it's not tough to navigate. But the only person that can truly pull you out of that funk and raise your vibration is you and when you step back into that when you remember that it can be a little jarring at first like ooh, like ooh, i am the only one that can really raise my energy here but it also reminds you of the power that you have we all hold so much power and we just forget we get lost in the blame game we all do it we want to blame our job or our relationship or politics or the stock market or rising prices, or the weather. You know, we want to blame all these things for our funky mood when really 
It's about taking personal responsibility and going back to the things that do make us feel good. Stop focusing so much on the things that make you feel bad and focus on the things that make you feel good. It sounds so simple, but we can just get so lost in that victim mentality. So this brings me to that next point, just being aware when you're in that victim mentality. And it's okay to be there for a little bit. Like again, if something truly horrific happens, it's okay to like feel that for a bit. I know I felt that this summer with some things I've shared on here and just some like some really sad things have happened. And I've had my sad moments. I've let myself feel the sadness, like go there, go there. And what I found personally is that when I truly go there with my feelings, it's intense for a little bit. And then I just feel this huge release. Maybe it is crying or maybe I get my anger out in another way, like somatically, whatever it may be. I feel that huge release and there's just so much space from the emotion. We are not our emotions. We just feel them. They come and they go and it's important to feel them. So again, When you're in that victim mentality, fill your feels, fill it for a second, and then remember that truly at your core, you are not a victim. You are a creator. You are always creating your life and creating your reality. And you get to choose the story of your reality. You get to choose the mindset. You get to choose the energy, the vibration. You get to choose all those things. So that leads me into my next point. This is just flowing so perfectly. (laughs) Even though I have my notes, it's just coming out. Anyways, the next point I want to make is focus on what you can control. There are so many things we cannot control. I would list them out for you, but that would be a very long video. Focus on what you can control, like your mindset, what you do with your time, who you surround yourself with, what you surround yourself with, what you're consuming, not only like physically, like the food you're consuming, but also what are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you partaking in? Focus on what you can control and release. Exhale, release the things you cannot control. And when that gets overwhelming, keep it simple. Come back to your breath. When you feel those mind stories coming in, oh, mine love to come up all the time and make me worry about something that could possibly happen five years from now. Like that's how insane our mind is, especially at 3 a.m. That's when it loves to think about possible problems five years from now. Just big exhale, big exhale, come back to your breath, come back to this moment, come back to your truth, come back to your core. And remember, you are a powerful creator. As Abraham Hicks says, you have the power that creates worlds within you. And if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. I freaking love listening to Abraham Hicks. So if you're into that, just Google Abraham Hicks on YouTube while you're here right now after this and just listen to them for a little bit. That always, always raises my vibration. Another thing that I mentioned earlier that can really help me, especially when I'm very much in my head, which again, we can all do, is doing some kind of somatic work or like physical work. It could be yoga. It could be going for a walk. Anything physical just helps you get out of your head and into your body. Or I don't even know if this counts as somatic work, but I've also started coloring recently. I have a million coloring books I've just never used. I've never taken the time to use. And sometimes when my son is playing independently down here or he's playing with his cousin, I will get out my coloring book and put on some nice music in the background for all of us and color a little bit. And sometimes they even join me. And I just think we forgot how good some of those simple activities can be. So do something physical, do something maybe tactile with your hands like coloring or something physical like yoga or going for a walk, especially I feel like when my son is like having a moment, I'm like, okay, we're going outside. And that always, always makes him feel better. It makes me feel better. Just going outside and getting some movement is some of the best medicine for your soul. Now, this next thing I find very interesting and I did this the other day and it felt so powerful. But when you're feeling stuck or just in a funk or unsure, or you're just like, there's a lot of uncertainty in your life, connect with your future self. Now, I don't want to get too woo and too like rabbit hole here, but we're going to go there for just a moment. If you reference my podcast episode about time, time is an illusion. Like science is backing that up now. Quantum physics is backing that up now. All we ever have is the present moment. So with that, It is believed that everything is actually happening right now. The past and the future are all happening in this present moment. 
Now, you can ponder that for a bit and get really like lost and like mind blown (laughs) in that fact, but let's use it to help us here. If that is true, you can connect with your future self and your past self and get some guidance from him or her, your future self. So what I recommend doing, again, like maybe doing some breathing beforehand, some calming breaths, maybe a little meditation, and just like write a letter either to your future self or even from your future self. Like try to channel her and see what she would tell you in this season. Like I know that sounds kind of crazy and like it would be difficult to do, but I feel like when you take some deep breaths and get into that state, it will come through a lot easier than you think. And don't question it. Just see what comes through and see what she wants you to know. I feel like for a lot of us, it's going to be like, have more fun or like do the things you love doing. Stop worrying about this, blah, blah, blah. So just be curious and open with that, but write a letter to yourself now from your future self and just see how you feel afterwards. To me, connecting with her was just such a freeing feeling. And I know she would tell me to just release a lot of the worries that I have right now and to go do the things that I love to do. Keep it simple. Now, the next point is going to sound like such a freaking broken record, but that's because it is so powerful and we can always do it no matter what. And that is finding gratitude and appreciation for the things we have in our life right now. It drives me crazy and I'm trying to release that because that's not a good energy to be in. How easy we can just like take the things that we are wanting in the past for granted. Like we get the thing and then we just take it for granted. Go back to your past self. Maybe this is a way where you, you can channel your past self. Like even your inner child. I put up a picture of my inner child in my office just to remind me of this. Think of how proud she would be of you right now like seeing all the things that you've got going on in your life, she would be amazed. And even if you don't think she would be amazed, I would beg to differ. She would be amazed. Like she would just be in awe of the person you are now and what you've done with your life and all those things. And maybe if you feel like you truly like haven't made her or him proud, like what can you do right now? That's an action step. That's a line action step you can take right now to work towards making her proud because that's really the only person you need to impress. I heard this from someone else. The only person you need to impress in this life is your inner child. And that is such a beautiful thought, such a freeing feeling. So back to my original point. Make a list of all the things you are grateful for in this season. There are always things that we can be grateful for. And that is one of the highest vibrations you can be in. My last tip here, and this is a reminder I need so, so often, is to just stop taking life so seriously. We can make the things that we worry about seem like they're so life or death, which of course there are certain scenarios which may be life or death but most of them are not. So can you, again, just take a deep breath, incorporate more fun, more laughter. I've mentioned this in so many ways, but sometimes I just laugh at reels for a long time, which that could be a dangerous place to go laugh. But like, go laugh with your friends, go watch something funny, go play outside, go play with your kids, go play a board game with your significant other, go play a game that you used to play when you were a child. Go do something fun and just stop taking life so seriously. There are many thoughts that I like to bring back in that help me remind me of this. Like, let's again go down a little rabbit hole. There are many people that think that this is a simulation that we're in, that life is a simulation. I know Lindsay goes from zero to 100 really fast. Well, if that is the case, if we're in a simulation, who knows? But isn't the point of a simulation to not only like practice and grow, but also to have fun? Like, that's why I played The Sims back when I was a child. That's a game that I loved as a child. So if that serves you, keep it. If that freaks you out, don't keep that thought. But if it's a simulation, we should be having more fun. And even if it's not a simulation, having more fun is so healing. It is some of the best medicine you can have. Like Going outside, going for a walk laughing literally some of the best medicine out there so i hope this video helped you let me know in the comments what are some things that help you get out of a funk are are some of the things i listed things that you're wanting to try or maybe you've tried how have they worked for you please share this video with anyone that you think needs to hear this message that is also maybe in a funk because it happens to all of us if you are new here please subscribe i have new videos every week and starting in october i'm going to have 
a lot. I mean, a lot more videos. Like this video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'm just sending you all so much love, all the highest vibes. Even if you're in a funk, those high vibes will come back. And I'm just so grateful that you're here with me today. Love you all so much. And I will see you in the next video.